Hey everybody, welcome once again to Formula for Success, our weekly 100% free webinar where we're helping you in every way to regain control of your body, mind and health so you can lead a vibrant, fun, fulfilling and successful life and achieve balance in all areas of your life. You know, just It's important for everyone to be aware of just how big an impact having control of your body, mind and health has. It is the catalyst for success in all areas of your life. And today's call is a really, really important one, and one that's very personal for me because it's all part of my own personal journey over the eight, last eight years. And I'm going to be covering with you, discover the five reasons adopting a plant-based vegan lifestyle could save your life. It's a very serious topic, and you know that is a very true statement. But if I was told this eight years ago, I would have told, thought that was crazy. How can it save your life? It's crazy anyway. Veganism. That's like a cult. That was my ignorant impression back then, but that's where education and knowledge is important. Always be open to learning new things. Like for any of you on the call, I'm sure there's quite a few of you who are you know, typical meat eaters and veganism may seem pretty crazy. You might be on this just out of curiosity. Um, but the key thing I'd say to, you to, say to you is just be open, be open-minded. That's what's really crucial. And thankfully, I was eight years ago. So let's look at some famous vegans. So Natalie Portman is one. Joaquin Phoenix. Gwyneth Paltrow. Bill Clinton recently, in the last few years, when he had his heart issues, he decided to be vegan and lost a ton of weight and you know, proclaims that he has never felt healthier. This Williams sisters, you know, they're both vegan now. And again, they have such incredible success throughout their careers, but in particular, again, the last few years. And they feel that you know, they take it up a notch as a result. Here's a MMA cage fighter. I can't remember his exact name. But again, this is very contrary to your typical MMA fighter to be vegan. And one shocking one was Mike Tyson. Again, about two or three years ago, he went vegan. No one would have ever thought that. Um, and recently, Samuel L. Jackson in August 2013 went vegan and lost 40 pounds in a couple of months. And again, says he hasn't felt better. So, you know, why are they all doing this? You know, why, is this just another Hollywood craze? You know, is it just like a fad diet? Well, you know, sometimes it might appear that way when you see such people following these things. But the thing is, sports people, are like I've shared, I can tell you after this presentation, you will see that this certainly is not just some cultish fad. These days, in times, you know, disease is rampant. Heart disease is rampant. Diabetes, even with kids, diabetes used to be an old person's disease. That's what it was called. Now even kids are dying of a young age of diabetes. Cancer is rampant. Cancer is now the number one killer pretty much all over the world. And it's on an increase all the time despite billions and billions and billions being put into research and so on. And you know what I'll share with you in this presentation, I can guarantee you, will dramatically increase your chances of avoiding such diseases, of course, once you implement what I teach you. And you do not want to have this happen at a young age. Okay? You want to have a vibrant, fun, fulfilling, successful life, one where you live to old age and you retain your independence. Okay? That's what's really crucial for everybody. So the key thing again with knowledge is, you know, allows you to possibly get control then you need to take action. Again, there's no point having knowledge unless you take action on it. So that's why like, this presentation is going to be useless unless you take action on what I teach you. And that will lead to your results. Just like if you don't take action, that means you're going to lead to results in terms of no results. Okay? So it's really important that take control, take action, get results. And it's all down to you. You are the person who controls your life. You are the person who controls your health, you know, your destiny, your energy levels, your body shape. You know, start regaining control of it because it is up to you where you're at. So my promise to you after this presentation is that you will understand why I had no choice but to adopt a 100% vegan lifestyle in January 2012. You will understand why you too should adopt a 100% vegan lifestyle or at least consider it. You will know the truth about the food industry in relation to animal products and dairy products. You will know more about the key lifestyle choice that will accelerate your fat burning efforts. You would know the solution to increasing your longevity and increasing your chances of preventing killer diseases. This is me a few years ago, 
when this is my transformation, my 12-week transformation when I won Body for Life competition. And at this stage, you know, physically on the outward side, you would say, God, it looks really good, really lean, sculpted, you know, super healthy and so on. And, you know, don't get me wrong, I was healthy, I was in great shape, I felt great. However, I was nowhere near as healthy as I could be. And this is the problem with um, what you get used to. What's the norm? What feels normal to you isn't necessarily always what's good for you. And I thought I was healthy then, but the reality is I was not. I was, you know, a reasonable health because of, say, all the different supplements I was putting into my body and all the animal protein and fats I was putting into my body. You know, I was not in supreme health. I was not in optimum health like I would be today. Um, and that's why I show you this photo because people would have the impression that means I'm really healthy. You know, when I said the reality is I wasn't. My personal story is, you know, I was always a big meat eater and dairy consumer. And, you know, growing up as kids, you know, we had our typical meat and two veg dinners. We'd have meat in our sandwiches. And we'd have our, you know, our breakfast, our typical Irish or whatever you'd call it, breakfast with sausages and rashers and puddings and everything and eggs on a Saturday and Sunday morning. You know, we'd have a huge uh, consumption of meat and loads and loads of milk because Milk's important for kids, and milk's important for your bones, isn't it? You know, so these are what we're swimming and other things like that. Your great treats. I used to guzzle beef and all the way together, actually. So went to that. I used to guzzle them non-stop. I used to eat 13 times a day when I did bodybuilding. Three or four of them was at least beef, because beef supposedly was a big muscle builder. Loads of whey shakes, casein shakes, loads of dairy products, all the stuff that the community said that you needed to build muscle how wrong they are and how um, ignorant to the reality I was. And, you know, I never quite know the extent of damage that I could have done to my body from the years and years of consuming these foods and all the different supplements. I printed a thought of my son being vegan from birth. My son was born eight and a half years ago. My wife is vegan from 10 years ago and she's vegetarian most of the rest of her life. And I had no say in the matter when he was born. He was going to be vegan. And not only myself, but my family and, and my wife's family and her friends and so on thought it was crazy. They thought, you know, what she was doing is just another fad, another diet. This would wear off after a while. It's just something that's of interest to her. But when my son was going to be vegan, that was serious. And that was serious to all of us. And it led to a lot of arguments. And, you know, but she stood firm. She stood with her beliefs. And I have to admire her for that. But we basically all waited for the the day to come when he would have to be rushed to hospital, whether it be anemic or, you know, unhealthy or sick or something. However, I watched him for the first year, not a sickness, not an illness, not even a sniffle. His growth was unbelievable. His cognition was unbelievable. I was pretty stunned at this, as we all were. But I particularly took notice because, you know, at the end of the day, he was my son, and I was pretty amazed at how he was growing and thriving despite how he was being brought up nutritionally. So that's what made me a bit curious about what was happening. Um, over the course of the next couple of years, again, he thrived more and more. You know, compared to three or four-year-olds, when he was one or two, he had a lot better brain. His grow, he grew a lot better. I think he got his first cold when he was about three years of age, something like that. So this is what led me to go, here, you know, what were those books you said? What were those videos? What were those websites? You know, I started doing a bit of my own research because I said I was curious. Here I was witnessing my son growing up really healthy and thriving, totally the opposite of what my brain had said would happen and what I'd been taught would happen with people on a vegan-based lifestyle. So I was curious and I said I've always been open-minded and, you know, it was a huge reason why I went 100% vegan in January 2012. But it was a seven-year journey, you know, seven-year or so journey gradually cutting things out, gradually cutting things down to eventually at the end of 2011 saying, look, I'm more or less living a vegan lifestyle. Let's give it a go and see what happens. And it's been the best decision I've ever made. And I've, I've now called hundreds of people all over the world to do the same. And you know, their lives have transformed in terms of their health, their energy, sleep even, their fat, fat um, amounts in their body, every kind of angle, because that's what it impacts. So these are two people that I have to thank, and I do thank them every day for but especially my wife for pushing me to and encouraging me to look at being vegan and going that direction. And then my son for being such a perfect example of a child being brought up in a vegan-based lifestyle. So the five reasons you should go vegan. 
You're not designed to consume dairy products and you have been lied to. You're not designed to consume animal protein and you are not eating what you think. The publicized protein requirements are a complete lie. A lie that basically funds the food industry and the supplement industry. You can accelerate your fat loss and results dramatically by going plant-based vegan. And you will almost certainly live longer, more vibrantly. You'll prevent disease such as cancer, heart disease, and diabetes. As I said, you'll maintain your independence right up to your final days. And you won't have massive medical bills and medication bills and prescriptions. All very, very important. So if you look at these images, here's an image of a mother breastfeeding her child. Here's an image of a woman breastfeeding a cat. Now this second image should disturb you because this does not look normal. And this is not normal. Yes, we're doing the same thing. Okay, We're consuming the cow's milk, which would basically be the same as if the cow was to breastfeed off us. Okay, so they consume human milk. It's not normal for a cow or a calf to consume uh, human milk. It's not normal for a gorilla to consume cow's milk. It's not normal for a goat to consume human milk. Why is it so normal for humans to take the milk of another mammal, which is a cow and also goats as well? Why is that seen as normal? But it's not. And that's why I show you this image, and it tends to get quite a stir when I show it. Because it just shows how abnormal what we do is on a daily basis. The dairy industry basically has been milking us for years. Milk contains, this is some explanation as to why we can't even break it down, why it's not good for us and why, you know, this whole lactose intolerant, intolerant thing is becoming more and more known and popular. Basically, we're all that way, but just to varying degrees. Milk contains protein called casein and contains calcium. They're chemically bound together. Now, they need to be broken apart for proper utilization. Digestive enzymes that do this are renin and lattice. If you're over the age of three, you no longer produce these enzymes. They're only produced in the first three years of your life because they're used to break down the casein that's in the milk, okay, in the breast milk. That's why it stops producing it. So you can't break down these, the, the casein, okay, because we don't have the digestive enzymes. We're the only species on the planet that drinks milk as an adult. No other mammal drinks milk after they're weaned except for us. They don't even drink their own milk. Cows don't drink milk, just calves. Not natural to drink milk, milk after weaning, even more natural to drink milk of another species, okay? So I hope that's making sense. And any questions at age make sure you put them in. Why are we so different from cows? Calves only, of course. But also, cow has four stomachs, okay? They're just a system of four stomachs. And then, like a calf would be 200 pounds of birth. In two years, it will go up to 2,000 pounds. That's tenfold increase. Now, most kids are seven, eight, or nine pounds. Imagine, say, a kid that's 8 pounds, 80 pounds after two years. 80 pounds would be, what's that, 5, nearly 6 stone, if you understand stone. Okay? That would be huge for a kid two years age. That would be seriously obese. It was designed for Dairy is designed for weight gain. The properties of the cow's milk is to help the calf to get bigger and to grow really fast, increase tenfold. So, of course, it's going to do the same to us. Okay, and that's why people have a lot of excess fat because of their dairy consumption. People might think goat's milk might be better for us. They've only one stomach. But again, it's not meant for us. It's meant to be for the kid. That's what it's for. It's not meant for human consumption. Okay? Another important issue is that, you know, they, they contain um, 300 times that of human milk in terms of the casing. 300 times. We can't break it down anyway, but that's an enormous amount. People always wonder, where am I going to get my calcium from? This is typically what's asked. Now, have you seen the teeth of a great ape? And how much milk do they drink? How about their bones? Are they strong? Well, look at these images. Here's two great apes fighting. Here's an elephant. Look at the size, especially the great apes. The musculature on these incredible animals. Okay? The power that they have. They're not living on consuming loads of milk and dairy products. Yet their bones are super strong, their teeth are really strong. Doesn't that, ask, doesn't that pose a question for you? People will say about calcium, you need all the calcium. Calcium throws a neutralized acid in the body, like a bank balance. Each time something acidic goes in, we rob our calcium bank, okay? And that's what meat and dairy is. It's highly, highly acidic, as are most of the supplements that people are putting in their bodies as well. 
the calcium is stored mainly in your bones and teeth. So if you're taking withdrawals, you're leaving the brittle bones or osteoporosis. This is where the whole lie is in terms of dairy products, in terms of the way they say it prevents osteoporosis. It's so important for your bones. Women need to consume lots of dairy especially. It's a complete lie from the food industry. It's acidic. It leaves the calcium from your bones. It actually causes our osteoporosis and all bone disease. Not prevents it. As I said, it's acidic. Contrary to the marketing, they make our bones weaker. This is advertising. Why else should dairy be cut out? Well, it's a glue-like substance and it's mucus forming. So what happens is good stuff can't be broken down properly and utilized and bad stuff can't be passed out. It's like nearly like a fly catcher inside in your body. It's grabbing you know, the substance that's coming in. And it gets badly stored in your lungs too. So it prevents your lungs a lot from working as it should. That's why asthmatics, when I've got asthmatics to give up dairy, they nearly instantly, within a couple of days, cannot believe how well they're able to breathe. And that was one thing that, you know, in my journey to going vegan, I said I'd try it. After researching dairy, I said I'd try it for two weeks, having no dairy, see how I get on. So I had no dairy, fine, to substitute and so on. Two weeks later, I had to my favorite dessert. Within a couple of spoons, my nose started running. I started feeling I couldn't breathe as well. This is the scary thing about dairy products. You don't actually even realize that it's causing you harm until you cut it out and then go back on it again. So this is what's scary. Everyone who consumes dairy is going around and their body's not working as it should. Their body's being caused harm and they have no idea. There are no signs. Remember asthma. Asthma is seen as, oh, it's a problem you're born with typically or maybe it's down to smoking or passive smoking. You know, it, they never look at anything to do with your nutrition and what you're consuming. But I can guarantee you if you've got asthma or know someone who's got asthma, Get them to cut out dairy, it'll make a huge difference. It's basically linked to every ailment, pain, ache, disease that there is. There is extensive, extensive research done in this. Of course there's research and so on that's done to the country, but most of them are funded by the food industry, supplement industry and so on. So it's very biased information. Okay, so everything, arthritis, ADHD, fibromyalgia, obesity of course, heart disease, diabetes, Crohn's disease, all kinds of cancers. Here's research from Sweden, so bronchial asthma patients. So they so severe their level of asthma that they require cortisone or other medication and they were put onto a pure vegetarian diet without eggs or dairy. Okay? After one year, more than 90% of the patients who completed the project reported a major improvement in the severity and frequency of asthma attacks. Also levels of medication doses dropped an average of 50 to 90%. A number of patients were so improved they were able to discontinue medication altogether. If you take medication right now, can you imagine how wonderful it would be to cut out your medication and not have to rely on it anymore? You just you think about that. Apart from the cost, it's the fact of having to take it. Here's some more. There's basically direct correlation with those who consume the most meat and milk and other animal products with osteoporosis. Typically, these countries are U.S., you control the U.K., and there are Finland, Sweden, Occident, Japan, and those countries tend to be at the lower end of the scale. 40 million American women have osteoporosis, only a quarter of a million African women have. Look at the size of those two continents, okay? And look at the difference in the numbers of osteoporosis. Look at Africa, and supposedly they're totally undernourished. Yet only a quarter of a million have osteoporosis. They don't have all these dairy products. 40 tribes in Kenya and Tanzania, only one is osteoporosis. That's a Maasai tribe, the cattle owning, milk drinking tribe. The others do not consume milk. So how are they managing this? Okay, if we need all these dairy products to have strong bones and prevent osteoporosis, how come 40 million Americans have it and only a quarter of a million African women have it? Dairy is plentiful in the, in the US, it's far plentiful in Africa. Here's some more statistics that osteoporosis is most common in exactly those countries where dairy products are consumed in the largest quantities, US, Finland, Sweden, UK. Bantu women taking 350 milligrams of calcium per day. They have nine children during their lifetime, breastfeed them for two years, never have calcium deficiency, seldom break a bone, rarely lose a tooth. Even think about when you see, when they do aid ads and charity ads and donations on TV. You see the way their teeth gleam? See how strong their teeth are? They have to totally malnourished. Okay? In certain elements.
but it, calcium is not being leached from your teeth and your bones. Cancer, one of the most consistent specific links between diet and prostate cancer is dairy consumption. Okay, here's another research study in terms of the link between dairy products and prostate cancer. As it says down here, in these studies, men with the highest dairy intakes had approximately double the risk of total prostate cancer and up to fourfold increase in risk of metastatic or fatal prostate cancer relative to low consumers. These are scary, scary stats. Basically, cow's milk is an acidic effect. Cancer thrives in an acidic environment. Casein feeds cancer growth like wildfire. So if you ever yeah, are unfortunate to get cancer or you know someone who has cancer or gets cancer in the future, make sure to cut out dairy products immediately, immediately. Otherwise, they're pretty much just adding fuel to the fire. Diabetes is another huge thing these days, type 1 diabetes. Genetics does play a small role, but diet has a major impact. Okay? And cow's milk and dairy, again, has a huge impact on diabetes levels. To greater consumption of cow's milk, greater the prevalence of type 1 diabetes. Type 1 diabetes is, diabetes is crazy. We're contracting a disease from our lifestyle. It's a lifestyle disease. No one should be getting diabetes. Nobody. Our bodies are well able to work normally, work as they're designed to do. But if you put the wrong things in, then they can So diabetes has a huge link to your consumption of dairy products. There are so many different things out there now, whether it be soya products, rice products, you know, it's all kinds of wheat, wheat protein, pea protein, rice protein, almonds, you know, all kinds of nut milks and nut butters and so on. There are just so many options now. There is no excuse. If you feel, you know, that you are ready to move to more plant-based lifestyle, there are loads of alternatives out there. There's nothing to be afraid of anymore. People are always afraid of, you know, if I cut out this, what will I eat then? There's, it's easier these days. It's all about knowledge and knowing what to do. Cancer, what do they recommend? You know, what about what they recommend? I mean, sorry. You now, one question asks, like, you know, why is it cows and why don't they get the milk out of gorillas and elephants and everything? You know, if they want more milk, why not get out of everything? Well, cows produce the largest quantity of milk, but also, more importantly, they're more easily housed than an elephant. So they make more money. Food industry is all about profit, doesn't care about the consumer. It's a multi-billion dollar industry based on brilliant marketing and the addictive taste of milk, butter, cheese. Bet you didn't know that cheese has the same addictive properties in it as heroin. And we all see heroin abuse as you know, something to be frowned on in some circles and you know, something that's very difficult to get out of. Cheese has the same properties. Think about your consumption of cheese, whether it be now or in the past. It's so, so addictive. It's hard to not consume it. And we typically have cheese on everything. Doctor people say, but doctors can consume dairy. I go in, my bone density is my bone density's gone down. They'll tell me I need to consume lots of dairy. So shouldn't I listen to them? Well, no, because they know hardly anything about nutrition. They have less than three hours of nutritional education throughout medical school, which is typically eight years. And that three hours is the same now as it was 20, 30 years ago, what they learn. And even back then, it was not up to date and it was not relevant. So what they know about nutrition is minimal and is not even useful or up to date. Now to go on about meat, so like that's a lot about dairy, so I hope that's making sense to you in terms of meat-free zone, in terms of you know, understanding why one shouldn't consume meat products. Well, you know, we're not actually designed to consume meat. Let's do a comparison between meat eaters and uh, non-meat eaters. Meat eaters have claws, humans, we've no claws. Think about if you're just trying to rip apart the carcass with your bare hands. Do you think you could do it? So these are little signs again, you know, showing you what we're designed to do. Meat eaters have sharp front teeth for tearing and no flat molars for grinding. We have no sharp front teeth and we have flat molars. Look at the difference here, look at the tiger. Those teeth are designed for ripping things apart. So if you want to rip something apart, you use a knife. You don't use little grinder things. Look at our teeth. Our teeth are not designed for ripping things apart. That's why we're herbivores instead of a carnivore. Also, meat eaters have intestinal tract that is only three times their body length. So the rapidly decaying meat can pass through really quickly because the temperature of our bodies is really high and meat decays really quickly inside it. Humans have intestinal tractors 10 to 12 times their body length. So 
does not again tell you something. We're not designed to have meat getting in there, rotting, decaying, because it's going to take so long to get out of us. That's why sometimes you know, meat can be found years later in the intestine tract. Okay, so we've intestine tract 10 to 12 times our body length. Meat eaters have strong hydrochloric acid in stomach to digest meat. We have a stomach acid that is 20 times weaker than that of a meat eater. Meat eaters have salivary glands in mouth not needed to predigest grains and fruits. We have well developed salivary glands which are necessary to predigest grains and fruits. Here's a funny cartoon I use in these webinars on this topic, you know, a warrant about the hormones and all that meat and dairy you eat. This is where, you know, the food industry is lying to you, the dairy industry is lying to you, and it's time that you learn the truth. And I really encourage you that after this webinar, you know, start taking positive action, but also start to continue your education. Simply just go to you or you, YouTube and go, you know, is dairy good for us? Type things like that. Should we consume meat? benefits of your lifestyle, anything like that, just start researching, start listening, even look at both sides and then make up your own informed decision. I'm a big believer in educating yourself on an ongoing basis and making informed decisions then based on it. But a big reason, apart from the whole thing of the cruelty that's done to animals and whether we're designed to consume meat or not, big reason why I tell people they need to become plant-based vegan is that Look what's put into the meat these days. Look at the way these animals are treated. Look at the way that they suffer. Look at the factory farms. You know, look at the way they're fed themselves, even their feed. Look at what they're fed even. It's not what they're designed to eat. And then they're pumped full of hormones and antibiotics. So hormones to make them grow faster, to make more money. Antibiotics tend to help them to get over all the diseases they get from the way that they're treated and the way that they're housed and the way they're all together. And then there's the stress animals being butchered and in the act, in the arbitrary arbitrary arbitrary, you know, as it's being prepared for consumption. Think of the cortisol and everything that's released by that animal animal as it stresses on its conveyor belt to death. There's a protein lie out there as well. They say that you need so much protein and now again, when I was back doing all the bodybuilding, I used to consume up to 200 grams of protein a day because you needed a certain amount of grams per pound of body weight. That's what I used to calculate it on. And it had to be animal-based protein, and it needed to be a lot of beef especially. Vegan, vegetarian was seen as just for people who had no idea what they were doing. And it, was seen for, it was seen as for only for those who were super skinny and they couldn't build muscle. I don't know how many courses I went on in, in my career where, uh, where they said that there's no way you can build muscle on a plant-based lifestyle. And on the last, over the last you know, eight years or so, as I've educated myself and research, I've seen that that's not true, and I've also seen it in my own body and that of my clients. That a plant-based nutrition plan, the protein elements, plant-based pro proteins, are more than adequate to build as much muscle as you want, or to achieve whatever goals you want, whether it be fat loss, muscle gain, or it could be performance-related. So it's a complete lie. You do not need what they say you need, but they need to promote these things to, you know, make sure they increase their profits in the food industry and also increase much profits in the supplement industry. There would be no uh, synthetic supplements industry without whey protein. That's what really started it. And then it was where we were told how much protein we needed. And it was physically impossible to eat enough protein to get that in each day. So that's where the whey protein shakes came in. And then casein is slow releasing, they told us, so you need that at night time. So people are consuming all kinds of whey shakes and, pro and casein shakes, and the whole industry has come out now. There's thousands and thousands of companies all creating whey protein. Where did whey come from? Whey used to be cast aside before, after the cow was milked, till someone had a genius idea, because you have to at least say it was genius, but a genius idea to, hey, let's use this, and let's create a product with it, and let's say it's needed for protein and protein shakes and so on and so the supplement industry was born. You can get loads of protein in things like avocados, nuts, nut butters, tofu, tempeh, seitan, even vegetables, loads of vegetables, all the green vegetables have loads of protein in them too. There is no harm or fear of you not getting enough protein in. All the grains have some protein in them. Everything needs a certain bit of protein in it because that's how it binds. Certain bit of protein, certain amount of carbohydrate, 
just in varying degrees as to how much is you're in it. But there's, you get more enough protein through all these different products. So you can even look at lentils. You know, instead of having, um, you know, cottage pies filled with beef mince, you know, have some lentils, have some kidney beans. Try different types of lentils. As a tofu, instead of a chicken curry, you have a tofu and spinach and chickpea curry. Something like that. And your stir fries, put in some tofu. Instead of your eggs, so instead of scrambled egg, have scrambled tofu. Okay, there's loads of different options for you. The thing is, you don't want to be like this guy. This guy, again, is morbidly obese. You know, he's, I can guarantee he's had a high consumption of meat and dairy throughout his life, as well as just general junk food. But remember, most junk food con contains dairy. Whether it contains milk itself, or it contains whey, or lactose, or one of these derivatives. But again, this is what's happening to people. They're consuming all these bad products. And then kids, it's gone rapidly in terms of obesity and also diabetes. And cancer, kids are dying of cancer these days. Even kids as young as six or seven are dying of cancer. That is just crazy and it's wrong. But it's getting down to what we're consuming. We're feeding our kids the wrong foods. We're putting them into an early grave as well as ourselves. So it's time to take control. If you are a parent, you know, hope this is making sense to you because I'm really passionate about sharing this information and opening your eyes to this information as my eyes were opened to it as I watched my son eight years ago as he developed into an incredibly thriving young vegan child. You know, I want you to do the same with your kids. Move them in the right direction. Now, I never advise anyone to just dramatically change their nutrition plan. If you're a heavy meat eater right now, I don't advise that tomorrow you go vegan. What I advise is over the next week, move that direction. Maybe you have a, a one meal a day that's not meat or a couple of dinners or something like that. Use something like hummus or avocados or something like that in your sandwich instead of meat. Do something different. Make some positive change. We need to do something to stop the epidemic that's there in terms of obesity and all the different diseases like diabetes and cancer. And you can make a difference. Each one of us can make a difference both in our own lives and the lives of everyone else and also the lives of the planet. So it's your choice, basically. It's up to you what you do and you know, where you go with your life and whether you're going to have a vibrant, long life and maintain your independence or whether you're going to become another victim and statistic of diabetes, heart disease, or cancer. Now, do you really want to have that? Do you really want to lose your independence when you get older and not be able to do what you want to do? Now, you don't want to die young. And you know, from what I've researched and what I've seen you know, and experienced, consuming lots of animal products and dairy products is going to put you in this place. Okay? Of course, there's always exceptions. Just like you'll have someone who's a plant-based vegan person, super healthy, and they die 25 years of age. There's exceptions to everything, but there's simple facts that work for the majority. And also, there's various factors that can lead to death, not just your nutrition. Stress, of course, is a big one. But we need to work on what we can control. And we, you can control what you put in your mouth. You can control what goes into your children's mouth as well. So again, let's start taking control. I strongly recommend you, you read these books, The China Study, Diet for a New America, also John Robbins' other book, Food Revolution. These books are absolutely amazing and eye-opening. These are the two first books I read, and they opened my eyes to a whole new reality. Films, watch Forks Over Knives, watch Earthlings. Other movies would be called Home. That's a fantastic Film as well. So loads of different movies. You know, anyone who has questions in these, just contact me and I'll send you links to get them as well because I have many on my own YouTube channel. So, you know, start educating yourself. Start moving that direction. So let's recap the five reasons you should go vegan. So you're not designed to consume dairy products and you've been lied to. You're not designed to consume animal protein and you are not eating what you think. As I showed you, you know, we're teeth you know, our, our stomach acid, our intestinal tract. We're not designed to, to consume the animal products. And then the food industry is all, all about profit. It does not care about the consumer. So, you know, what you're consuming is not what you think it is. Protein requirements, what to say is not true. You do not need as much protein as they're telling you. You can accelerate your fat loss and results dramatically. Otherwise, it's very hard to shift stubborn fat if you're consuming dairy products in particular as well as the massive amount of saturated fat that's in animal products. And as well, it's acidic. The more acidic your body is, the worse condition it is. 
and also you know if you go plant-based vegan you have a very strong chance of living longer and definitely more vibrantly more energetically and you put yourself in a great position to present, prevent diseases such as cancer, heart disease, diabetes. So, you know, it's a case of, it's up to you, as I said, you know, it's a case of you making the decision. And, you know, this is like, a, you know, last 40 minutes or so that I've gone through this presentation. There's just so much information that needs to be shared with people about, you know, nutrition and all nutritional habits, but also, you know, getting all the key areas of your life in check. So, like your mindset, it's important to have a good mindset. Your nutrition, as we've gone through, there's only a small part of nutrition. There is so much more to nutrition. Exercise, sleep, achieving balance in all the areas of your life, relationships, professional, wealth, and so on. So I just want to tell you for a minute about Formula for Success Live and let you know how you can make big savings right here in the webinar. So Formula for Success Live is my three-day live stream event. It's been May 9th, 11th this year. So you can now secure your live stream ticket to my three-day signature event which means you do not have to leave your home, you do not have to pay for accommodation, you do not have to pay for food in expensive restaurants, you don't have to pay for gas to get there in the first place, or planes to get there. You can sit in your home and attend this three-day event via live stream for a very small investment. This is your time to regain control of your body, mind and health, and ultimately your life, because when you have control of your body, mind and health, it is a catalyst for success in all areas of your life. Think about a time when you were happy with your body or where you were thinking more positively or had better health. How were your relationships? How was your career? You know, how was your wealth? I bet you it was a lot healthier. You know, so it impacts every area of your life. You'll basically finish on day three of Former for Success Live with your personalized blueprint for success because you know not only do I have incredible speakers from all over the world, experts in their areas in achieving results, high performance, create success mindset. You know, cancer prevention, cancer cure, alkaline lifestyle, veganism, plant-based nutrition, recipes, sleep, all the different areas. And we also knit all of it together then to impact all areas of your life. You have your own personalized blueprint because we take you through a process where we're not just educating you and inspiring you and motivating you, but also we're working with you in little workshop sessions to write out and clarify exactly what you need to do the second the event ends. Your investment for these three whole days of coaching with myself and, and many other top experts all over the world, it's only $27. That's right, $27 for three whole days of coaching. And this event is like a coaching event. This isn't like your typical event where you know, promises loads and you get very little comment and only give you snippets. This event is all about giving you everything that you need to have your own personalized blueprint. So you need to go to the link if you're watching the recording below the video and press the sign up now button or if you're on this webinar live right now, click the link I'm going to put into the chat box and you're going to be redirected into the sign up page. You can think about yourself. How worthwhile is your investment in yourself? Now you've come on this webinar or you're watching this replay there's a link for those who are on live click that link and go and click click to sign up now but you know how important is your body your mind your health your life i can guarantee you you know you implement what we i share with you on this webinar you're going to make a big difference to your health your energy productivity your fat levels and so on but how about if you could know it all how about if we, we were ta taken through a whole sheet of cross it's going to dramatically change your life. So don't wait on this. Go to the link right now. Click the link that I've put into the chat box. Go to it right now. Or if you're watching the recording, go below the video and click the sign up now button. This truly event will change your life forever. Secure your place right now. I cannot tell you enough how important it is you get on this. The time is now. Your time is here. Your time is now to change. Time is now to regain control of your body, mind, and health. I really hope you make the right choice here. So, you know, that's what we've covered. That's about Form of Success Live. You know, I want to thank you for coming on and spending time on this presentation. And I hope you've got a lot of value from it. What's crucial is that you take action. Remember, knowledge is not power. The implementation of knowledge is what is power. So go out there, take action and transform your life. You deserve
to live a fun, vibrant, fulfilling and successful life, but you will only achieve that if you take the right action in the right direction. So take care, I look forward to speaking to you next time. I hope you've gone and invested in a formula for success live. Remember, for a limited time only, you can get in for $27. It will soon rise to $97. So save your $70 now by clicking the link or going below and clicking the button on this webpage. I look forward to speaking to you again soon. Have a wonderful time. Take action and enrich and empower your life.